Today, I'm putting the Thunderbolt laser head to head against the X-Tool P2 laser to help you make a decision on which one is right for you. I should tell you that I'm an affiliate for one of these companies and not the other, but that won't influence the information I provide in this video. And actually my recommendations throughout this video may surprise you. Both are highly capable machines and each has its own unique strengths that set it apart from the competition. Since I've already done videos on these lasers separately, I'm gonna breeze through the capabilities of these machines pretty quickly here as an overview and only cover the major differences. Of course, the real value of this comparison lies in the details, so let's dive right in and take a closer look at both machines. The Thunderbolt laser is an incredibly powerful machine with an output power of 30 watts, but because this is an RF laser, it's comparable to a 60 watt glass tube CO2 laser. You can swap out the standard lens and add the four inch lens to allow you to cut thicker materials. And it's high precision engraving capabilities with the one and a half and two inch lenses make it perfect for detailed work. As I mentioned, the laser is an RF or radio frequency laser, which means that it doesn't use a water chiller and instead is cooled by this bank of fans. This however does contribute to the weight and portability of the laser, which I'll talk about in a bit. The X-Tool P2 laser, on the other hand, takes a slightly different approach. This laser has an impressive 55 watt water chilled glass tube. There is a water reservoir in the back of the machine that helps the laser to stay cool, and it's actually very compact. As far as the quality and precision of that power, there's currently only one lens available for this machine. So if you want finer precision with a shorter focal length lens, or a longer focal length lens for thicker cutting, there's not much in the way of options for this laser. When X-Tool released the P2, they put out a video showing the capabilities of engraving a toothpick. Here's a clip from their promo video. I tested this feature when I first got the P2, and it does a really good job. I've seen plenty of other people engraving popcorn or other micro oddities, so I thought that I would go ahead and compare the bolt to the P2 on this as well. Stay tuned and I'll show you the results of that when we talk about engraving quality. Let's grade each of these machines. For power output, I'll give both five stars because while the Bolt has theoretically a lower power uh, output power, it has a power equivalent of 60 watts, putting them both in between 55 and 60 watts. The working area on the Bolt is 12 by 20, but the greatest feature of this laser is with the autofocus for your Z height which gives you just over four inches in height adjustment. For the height adjustment, you'll be able to see the difference from this and the P2 in a moment, but notice that the bed adjusts up to the lens. The 12 by 20 inch footprint is pretty standard for a desktop machine in this category, but there is one downside, and that's that the only pass-through is here in the front of the machine. Compare this to the X-Tool P2 that has a 12 by 23.6 inch working area. With the P2, to get additional working height on your work pieces, you have to manually adjust this tray here or get the additional riser base, which expands the depth that you can engrave. Notice the difference in how the autofocus is done here. The lens adjusts to the height of the material instead of the bed moving. This does have a side benefit, however. Because the bottom of the laser is open, you could theoretically engrave on whatever depth you want or set the laser directly on a surface you want to engrave like a table. Honestly, why the X-Tool P2 is lighter than the Thunderbolt, you're not likely to be moving the laser around, so engraving directly on a work surface would be a pretty niche thing. The ability for me to autofocus without having to manually adjust a crumb tray is a major selling point to the Bolt over the P2, in my opinion, unless you need the functionality of the optional conveyor system of the P2. One thing that X-Tool has done a great job at is accessories for their machines, including the conveyor system, which gives you the ability to engrave longer pieces, something that the Bolt can't do. I've only used the conveyor on one of my other X-Tool machines a couple of times, so I'll leave that up to you on whether that's something you would use or not. For working area, I'm gonna give the Bolt four stars. It's slightly smaller in width than the P2, but it does make up for the width in the ability to automatically adjust in height. The P2, on the other hand, gets five stars for work area because 
In addition to the uh, working area, you do have the ability to engrave up to 118 inches in length with the conveyor. I know you may be thinking that I should deduct points because the manual adjustment for the crumb tray, but while it's a nuisance, it still is technically more accessible to do longer and thicker material. If I were to make a decision based solely on the working dimensions and ease of use, I would choose the bolt. But of course you wouldn't make a decision only based on working dimensions, so let's take a look at some of the other differences. Okay, if you haven't seen my Thunderbolt review yet, one thing that I boasted about was the speed and accuracy of this machine. This machine is incredibly fast, allowing you to engrave up to 1,000 millimeters per second compared to 600 millimeters per second with the Xtool P2. Grant with Thunder Laser did a good video on the speed comparison of, on Thunder's channel, so I'm not gonna focus too much here on that. If you wanna see some of the speed comparisons that he did, I'll leave a link to his video in the video description. One thing that I think gets overlooked in speed comparisons, however, is depending on the spot size of the laser beam, the speed test can slightly be slightly different. The laser beam spot size of the P2 is 0.15 by 0.2 millimeters, where the spot size of the standard two and a half inch lens on the bolt is 0.115 millimeters. That brings up a couple of points. First, think of the spot size like the thickness of a pen. With a thicker point to your pen or marker, you have to take fewer strokes to fill in an area. However, if you have a smaller point pen or marker, you can get much better detail. So the speed of the machine is both an advantage and a disadvantage, depending on how you're planning on using it. Because you can get finer detail with this laser at a higher speed, I have to give the edge to the Bolt in this category with five stars. And the P2, three stars. Each of these machines has a built-in air assist. So what, why am I bringing it up if I said that I was only gonna talk about the differences in the lasers? Well, there is something about the Bolt that I'm a big fan of. The Thunderbolt has this adjustment knob right here at the top of the gantry, which allows you to make micro adjustments to suit your needs depending on what you're engraving or cutting. To make this adjustment with the P2, you'll need to go into the software and make that adjustment. Sometimes it's just the hardware improvements or other small differences that really help the machine stand out, like the overall build quality. Most of the bolt is metal versus much of the P2, which combines plastic and metal. I know reviewers and companies like to use this as a talking point as though it has a major bearing on the performance of the machine. But in all honesty, whether your shell is made of plastic or metal really doesn't matter to me. You're not likely to, gonna be moving either of these machines around the shop. So unless you're concerned with the plastic breaking, there's not a huge advantage to the machine being metal or plastic. In fact, being made of metal contributes to the overall weight of the machine, making the bolt much heavier, weighing in at 170 pounds compared to the P2 at 99 pounds. Most of the components that really matter are made out of metal, so to me there's not a distinct advantage one way or another on both machines. I will say that the viewing window on the bolt is much nicer in my opinion, with an angled portion, especially given its overall height. I have my P2 on the riser base 100% of the time, so both machines side by side, having a slightly angled window on the front of the bolt is nice. Also, I find the internal lighting and color window help me see inside the Thunderbolt pretty easy. Although each machine has a tinted viewing window, I still recommend not staring at the laser beam for long periods of time. I tend to get migraines, so I try to avoid staring at the laser beam even with safety glasses, but I'm not gonna tell you how to treat your eyes and neither should the safety police in the comments section. The bolt includes a larger blower that helps remove the smoke from the machine, whereas the P2 requires an external smoke purifier. They both accomplish the same thing, and in all honesty, I still connect my bolt to an air purifier instead of venting outside because it's location in my shop. Overall, I do give the edge on build quality to the bolt because the use over metal plastic doesn't really matter from an operational standpoint uh, from performance. It does feel more durable with its metal carcass. Five stars to the bolt and four stars for the P2.
you probably know where this is going, but let's talk for a moment about the distinct difference between these two machines. And that is P2's ability to engraved curve surfaces. The Xtool software allows the P2 to scan a curved surface and then adjust the laser head as it engraves to follow the surface of what's being engraved. I absolutely love this feature for doing things like bowls. While there is a workaround for the Thunderbolt where you can replace the lens with a four inch lens to allow for engraving on slightly curved surfaces, there is a chance that the engraving can become slightly skewed. Now you will be able to take advantage of the bolts running at a much faster speed, whereas the P2 will run much slower on a curved surface. But if you're doing something with a steep curve, you're gonna get a much better engraving with the P2. Because there is a workaround with the bolt and the four inch lens, I'm gonna give it three stars, but the P2 is gonna win this category with five stars. Now, how does all of the power, speed, size, and material settings that we've discussed play into the quality of the engraving, which in my opinion is something that's of high importance? I ran several tests, and when I say I ran several tests, I mean several tests. Several tests. I tested them side by side with a variety of projects. For example, here are a couple of cork trivets. One of these is made with the bolt and the other is made with the P2. This is the case with these coasters, these metal tins, these acrylic signs, cutting boards, photo paper images, and the same photo on both sides of this board. Chances are at first glance, you wouldn't be able to tell which machine engraved each of these projects. If I only owned one of these machines, I would say that I'd be pretty happy with the results of both on both sets of projects. So they can both accomplish pretty much the same type of project, but let's take a closer look at the quality of each and see if you can guess which machine produced each project. I've already talked about how the bolt can engrave much faster than the P2. And one thing that happens when you're engraving is the smoke and soot tend to settle around the engraving surface. I mostly used the manufacturer settings on these projects, which meant that the projects that ran at a lower speed built up more soot around the engraving surface. Take for example, these cork trivets. You can see more soot build up on the one engraved with the P2, and that is also in large part due to the smoke exhaust being slightly better with the built-in unit on the Thunderbolt. What about these images engraved on photo paper? Same thing. The Thunderbolt produced a much cleaner image than the P2. Take a look at these two acrylic signs. Both machines engraved and cut through the acrylic really nicely. Again, if I only had one of these machines and one of these projects, I'd be happy with the results, but putting the two side by side, one of them has a much cleaner appearance than the other. What about wood? Lots of makers use laser engravers to personalize cutting boards. In fact, that's the main reason why I got into laser engraving in the first place. Quality is important, and before I do any engraving, I always run tests to find the best settings for my projects. For this test, I used the recommended settings to have a side-by-side -side comparison, but had I run these using the settings from my independent tests, I really think that I could have gotten a more consistent result. However, doing so would have doubled the time it would take to engrave both of these projects. So you'll notice both of these engravings is much lighter than I would really want for a final piece. We didn't have any toothpicks laying around the house, but we did have these chopsticks. I think you'll be able to see the difference between the two machines well enough with these chopsticks. I've already touched on the great ability of the Auto Z height with the bolt. The difference between engraving these chopsticks really showed with this because when I went to measure the height with the P2, it struggled a bit to measure the height because of the camera instead of the touch probe on the bolt. Once I got good measurement on both machines, they am both engraved pretty well. I'll let you be the judge on which one looks better. I definitely have a preferred one, but let me know in the comments what you think. It pains me to report out some of these results because as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I'm an affiliate for one of these companies. Currently, Thunder does not offer an affiliate program, but 
I really wish that they did because after running these tests side by side, I have to give five stars to the Thunderbolt and four stars for the P2 on engraving quality. Had I just done the P2, which I've actually done reviews on the P2 and was very happy with it, uh, I would have given it five stars, but putting it side by side with the Bolt, it's just not a fair comparison for the detail and quality that you get with a Thunderbolt. Quickly, before I move on to talking about the accessories of these machines, one thing that I need to point out is the noise level of each of these machines. Although both of them are in my shop where it's generally noisy anyway, there's a significant noise difference between the two lasers. The P2 is much louder than the Bolt. Even though the Bolt uses a bank of fans to cool the laser, it's much quieter than the water-cooled system of the P2. That's it for that. I just needed to mention that real quick before moving on. Both machines have their own rotary devices, which can be used for doing things like tumblers and other round objects like baseballs or ornaments. For the P2, you can get a conveyor for doing larger pieces using the pass-through in the front and back of the machine. To do this, you need to add the additional riser base, which can also be purchased separately if you didn't want the conveyor. This gives you the ability to use the rotary and engrave thicker pieces. There is no option for a conveyor or riser for the bolt. Because all of the accessories are just so different and many of the bonus points were already awarded as part of my grading in other areas, I'm not assigning any points in this category, but wanted you to be aware of some of the accessories available for each machine. Both lasers are pretty comparable in price when you add the riser base to the P2 to make for the footprint that's roughly the same. Of course, each company runs various promotions, so I'm gonna only use the normal retail price for comparison. The normal price of the X-Tool P2 standalone is $49.99 and the riser base is $4.99. There are different accessory bundles that you can choose from and X-Tool does run a lot of sales, so you'll likely get the laser at a much uh, less price than the retail price. The Thunderbolt is standard at $54.99, so it's directly comparable to the P2. One thing to note is the Bolt already includes the exhaust blower, whereas the P2 will require you to get this as an additional add-on. So which laser system comes out on top? The answer, of course, depends on your specific needs and preferences. There is no doubt that the Bolt is much faster than the P2, and the ability to do fine engraving in detail uh, is great if you're doing precision engraving. If you'll be engraving lots of curved surfaces, the P2 is a great choice for that. Also, if you need to engrave projects that are slightly longer than the work areas that I've mentioned, the P2 is a better option. You should note to take advantage of the many features of the X-Tool P2, you'll want to use their proprietary software, XCS. But the software is actually really good if you're a beginner to laser engraving. On that point, if this will be your first laser, the P2 is a great choice because it really feels plug and play versus the Thunderbolt. Both machines can operate on the industry standard software Lightburn, which is my preferred software. Both the Thunderbolt laser and the X-Tool P2 laser are incredibly capable machines, each with its own unique strengths and weaknesses. By understanding what each system has to offer, you'll be better equipped to make an informed decision about which one is right for you. The final count of stars gives a one star advantage to the Bolt over the P2. I'll leave links to both of these lasers in the video description because it's not about sales, it's about giving you the right information on which one may be right for you. Thanks for watching.